mergers and acquisitions used to be much more confrontational, each side trying to squeeze the best price out of the other. Now the process is more cooperative, or it should be. It can be win-win for all the parties involved if it's handled correctly. Well, to talk about this, let's meet two partners from the Norwegian law firm Viersholm, Harald Hellebust and Eric Tines. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to The Business Debate. Eric and Harold, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Thank you. Thank you. So basically, Harold, first of all, why is M&A being done in a much more cooperational style now, not so confrontational? Because surely isn't the buyer always trying to get a low price and the seller's always trying to get a high price? Well, the, the price is still important, of course, but, uh, but, but in a world where buyers have a lot of money to invest and relatively few targets, uh, it is important to play on more than one factor to win. Um, like for example, in, in an auction process, uh, if you get to be the preferred buyer, you will probably get better guidance uh, and that could influence your possibility to win. In our opinion, m and should be a cooperation and, and not a war. Okay, but uh, there are still too many buyers chasing too few good deals, good targets, isn't there? Doesn't mm. that make it always become aggressive? Well, being a bully is not helpful in, in our review, um, but, but, but you should, as a lawyer, you should listen and, and you should act friendly and, and you should try to find the, the, the solutions that cater for the interests for, for both parties. Uh, and to do that, you also have to be creative and that's very important for a lawyer. Well, you're creative, but you're also very busy, aren't you, um, Eric? Norway's deal count is at an all-time high in 2017. Now, why is that? Isn't Norway an expensive place to do business in, to invest in? Well, we've got a high cost of living, but that reflects the fact that we have a strong economy, and a strong economy attracts business. And in addition to that, Norway is a politically stable country. It's, uh, it's economically open. It's always been. And we have a highly skilled, dedicated and reasonably priced workforce, actually. So all of that comes together to, uh, to drive uh, investment and, and M&A. So uh, for over the last few years, we've been at, at reasonably high M&A levels, uh, almost double the level that you see in, in continental Europe, if, if you compare with, with GDP. And some of the stress and the risk has been taken out of deals by M&A insurance. Now, what does this insure against? Why is it such a game changer? Well, the sellers could get a clean exit, and that's particularly attractive for private equity funds that would like to liquidate and get their money back. Um, and, and on top of that, very often insurers are, are more flexible with respect to the warranty protection that, are, that they are willing to give. Uh, so an M&A insurance could actually make it easier to do the deal. And Eric, you said that the M&A process should become less complex and less costly, and so it should be cheaper, but uh, the other law firms aren't going to thank you for saying that, are they? Maybe not, maybe not. But I think in the long term, we're all best served by running these processes as cost efficiently as, as we can. And it's, it's, it's all about how you plan and structure the work. I mean, first of all, to, uh, to keep costs down, you must uh, adapt the the process to the size and nature of the deal. You can't uh, do the same thing for a small deal that you do for a mega deal. And um, the first uh, rule, I think, is, is work closely with the client so that you really identify what's important in this deal and what is not. And next is, is plan the work. And, and the last is reuse what you can reuse, meaning using standardized, uh, standardized documentation, for example. And we're also obviously moving in the direction of, of using artificial intelligence, although that is in the early days. And you've said in the past that bad legal advice can really be mm. devastating for clients, especially in big transactions. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, the role of the lawyer has, all, has, has, has oftentimes been to identify every possible risk and try and, and protect the client against that risk. And it's obviously important to identify risks and to protect uh, to the extent you can. But at the same time, you can also ruin a deal doing, doing exactly that. And a lot of the job these days is actually finding ways of dealing reasonably in a commercial manner with risks and with the, the points that separates the party in the potential transaction so that you actually make the transaction happen rather than the opposite. Really interesting. With Eric and Harold, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. 
And join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in healthcare technology and the future of Islamic finance. But for now, from me, Sarah Lockett, at the London Stock Exchange Studios, it's goodbye and thanks for watching.